What I see with the scientific evidence that I have is Seneca Lake is slowly getting worse and worse over time. If we don't do something about it now, then its trajectory is such that it will degrade beyond a point of return in maybe 20, 30 years, something along those lines. My primary research interests are to look at water quality issues in the Finger Lakes. I do that by actively sampling the Finger Lakes and compiling a data set that extends back about two decades from the lakes to see how they've changed and to see how different perturbations have influenced those changes. Then what I try to use the data for is if there's trends that are going in an alarming direction, in other words, the water quality is degrading, then I try to present it to the appropriate people so they might be able to take action on it. Specifically, I spend most of my time on Seneca Lake. I've been monitoring that since the early 1990s, and I've found very simple parameters have, have changed to the point where the water quality is degrading. In other words, the, the lake is getting more turbid, and if it continues on its present track, I fear that it's going to get turbid enough to turn eutrophic and get ugly. Eutrophic means very productive. And what very productive means, instead of seeing a nice crystal clear blue lake like we enjoy now, it's going to be a green, slimy lake with a algal scum on the surface. The bottom waters will turn anoxic, and when that happens, they stink. They stink like rotten eggs. And both of those you don't want to happen because it's going to be very detrimental to the winery industry and to the tourist trade. And more importantly, we draw water out of the lake for drinking water and we probably won't be able to do that anymore either. So we don't want to ruin that vital resource that we have, and it's, it's going in that direction. Measuring the Secchi disc depths, which looks at water turbidity. It's, it's a simple disc that you lower down through the water column until you can't see it. It measures the amount of algae in the water. Those depths have been getting progressively shallower and shallower, indicating the lake is getting more and more turbid over time. The main reasons the lakes are going this way is runoff from the landscape. If you have a heavy rainstorm, most of that water will run right off the land and, and bring the topsoil with it. And with that topsoil and, and dispersed in the groundwater will be various nutrients, which then cause the algae to grow. Some of the stream sampling that I've been able to do has shown that indeed it does come from storm runoff, from, from big storms coming over the area with a lot of rainfall associated with those muddy streams that might flow into the lake. And where most of that muddiness is coming from is from bare ground, and the biggest percentage of bare ground around here is agricultural field. A lot more nutrients get into the lake than get out. That means with the extra nutrients then, the consequence is you'll have a lot more algae growing over time. If you took the care to put in a buffer strip around your farm, in other words, not plant everywhere in your farm and have vegetation that could trap that runoff of soil particles and, and runoff of nutrients from your landscape, then we wouldn't be going into this problem. If this lake doesn't stay the way it is, then property values from around the lake are gonna plummet because no one's gonna wanna come here to build a house. Um, the tax base will then plummet because those who live right on the lake pay the higher taxes. That means the communities are going to start to plummet as well because they, they just lost their tax base. It will have severe economic impact down the line if we don't do something about it now. The problem that I face is that a lot of people might not believe what I'm saying because if you look at the lake, you don't really notice that it's changing much. I mean, you can get out there on a nice sunny day and it looks crystal clear and blue and, and everything looks just fine. It's just that with the detailed data that I've been able to collect week after week after week has shown that the lake is progressing in the wrong direction.